It is definitely not normal for me to be stitching at 423, but I uploaded my last floss too. Now I'm just waiting to see what the crowd says. And I'm going to finish this. It's 423. I'm going to stitch this thing until completion because I want to switch projects and I'm so excited to get this done. <laughs> favorite things to do when driving to work is to drive through this area. I don't think you can tell right here, well I am at a red light because obviously, but down at the end all of the trees canopy and it just makes me so happy. <laughs> Random things that make me happy. Trees canopying. Uh, in the Bahamas there was also a section of road where the trees canopied and that just makes me happy. <laughs> I thought I just got like inspired because I was talking about happiness in canopying trees on my way to work. And I know that that sounds ridiculously cheesy, but people have asked before in real life, not really so much on here, but in real life, how am I so happy? <laughs> and honestly, 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 I have to say that, I mean, my, my, Fortunately, my brain is wired to always be happy. Um, I, I relate very much to joy from inside out, but I do notice that I do little things that maybe other people don't do, like look for happiness in the very little things like canopying trees or laughing. At whenever something like goes really wrong or things just start piling up and I mean normally and the natural response is to be upset or you know get down or frustrated and be angry and just like ah. um, but if it's a piling up of things I normally laugh about it like I feel like someone is <laughs> filming me well I'm filming myself but someone's like filming me from the outside and like throwing things at me to see like how funny it would be another thing that I've really noticed is since working again um, and just seeing some of the not so fun parts of life um, in children who don't choose to have things occur to them like accidents or illnesses and you know just the ugly side of life um again like my goal when I go to work with them is to make them smile or make the parents smile because there's nothing that you can say or do to make the situation better the situation sucks uh, but what I can do is be my weird self and maybe spark a little laugh here and there while they're going through the shit. Anyway, I just like, I got inspired. And since now I'm switching to this vlog style floss tube, I decided, you know what? Who else could I talk to? Oh, I could talk to my floss tube community. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was pretty much it. And things that I will be working on today. So I finished Clue 9. I'm sure I already did a little video about that. And I have switched to monogamously stitching-ish on Santa's Magic. I don't know how long it will take but I'm hopeful that I can crank that out too so that I can get that framed for Christmas. 
So now I need to get on my bumpy shuttle. That brings me no joy, <laughs> but I laugh about it. Um, and get on with my day. I'm hoping it'll be a short day, but I just have this like feeling that today's not gonna be the best of days at work. So we'll see. I have to be grateful that yesterday was a short day and I went in late today. So, you know, little things. Anyway, uh, see you later, bye. Why are you all bone? <laughs> Is that your bone? I guess you like your new bone. I'm gonna be super awkward because my husband and my brother-in-law are somewhere in my parents' house, but I'm in my parents' house. I can hear him. But I was gonna show you something. So this is the map of Westeros hanging on my parents' wall. Um, I stitched this in 2019? Yes. No, I finished it in 2019. I think I started it in 2018. Um, way before FlossTube, way before my Instagram channel. And it was funny because D's 20 stitches is currently stitching it and trying really hard to finish it. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that project. It's just, I didn't have it. So it's fully finished and up on the wall <laughs> next to the banner of the Starks. And I remember that I did a couple things. So on the Greyjoy squid, I recharted it uh, before I knew what recharting was. And I made some modifications on the Stark emblem too. And if you're interested in any of those, I took pictures of them so that I can send it to you all. So you can just send me a message on Instagram or leave a comment or email me, or I don't know, I'll figure out how to send it to you. But yeah, I want to say stitch this on, I think it was pictures plus 32 count doubloon, if I'm not mistaken, and just all DMC colors and there's a glare from the window, sorry. And I got this framed at my LNS back in the day, Stitches from the Heart, which has since closed. But I thought that it would be a nice little time to show you all this if I haven't shown it to you yet. see I am just waking up it's Saturday it was a long freaking week at work long 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 talk to your healthcare providers it's been hard <laughs> anyway I'm not gonna bog everyone down but ah, it's so bright I thought that I would hop on and do a little mini update and fill you all in with what I am doing so first on my list of things to do is check out my orchid because it's just looking kind of sad and floppy. So I need to figure that out. I need to check the roots, see if she needs water. I mean, this leaf is going strong, but these are just not, not good. So we need to figure her out. And then I have all of these goodies I can show off. Uh, let's see. So I got my fabric from Fabric of the Month from Fiberlicious. 
This was a generous, generous gift from Jody. Um, I, I was looking for kind of like a greenish for a um, project, the skeleton group. I think that that actually may work. Then this is some out of production Amsterdam blue that I found and bought a ton of from Zweigart. This is Rika's. I'm thinking this one is going to be for Ophelia. It's so pretty. And then this is Leslie Under the Sea fabrics of the, fabric of the month. Uh, I don't remember which month. Halcyon, super pretty. Then I got my color in cotton. I haven't even opened it. It's a gold. Ah. Autumn gold. Also really pretty. That would be a really fun one for fall or Halloween. This is Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World Salt Julie. These are the Valdani floss that she is doing for the modern folk embroidery. I loved the combination, so I stashed on that. Got some little pins for a Halloween Viscornu I'm thinking of making. Mama Luda influenced me on these guys. Michelle Bendy influenced me on this one a while back ago and I finally found it. Kids. Got a sunflower, which is super pretty. And I got my second needle tin. My first one is like a summery one, so I thought this one was a fun flowery one. Um, then over here, this box is empty. Um, oh, this goes with this. This is just a random scrap of fabric. I'm thinking of making a, um, ah, I don't even, I can't think. And they shall seek him. It's a, uh, in Spanish, nacimiento, uh, in English. Uh, I'm not religious. It's baby Jesus and all of the peoples. What is that called? I can't think of it. Anyway, my mother-in-law loves them and I was thinking of stitching one up for her for Christmas. This is Kyle's fault. <laughs> See, this is why I don't watch Floss too because people influence me. This is Angel of the New Dawn. I didn't have her. This is another Just Nan Christmas Elegance. I thought that one was really pretty too. And it came with the beads. Yeah. yeah. Came with the embellishments. I am super excited about this one. Um, I posted this in the In Search of on Facebook. This is Esmeralda's House. It's an out of print by Bright Needle. And I lucked out and someone had it. So I kitted, well, I'm kidding her up. I placed an order on one, two, three stitch for some fabric. By the way, there's some, a bigger stock of picture this plus. So I ordered a couple that I thought may look good and work. The called for is Zweigart Flax, which I don't know. In the picture it looks oatmeal-y. And they're, I don't know. I just wanted, I think I wanted something different. Um, there is an Instagrammer, I'll put her tag. She's stitching all of the houses and it's looking amazing. This is 7 a.m. I have been stitching and stitching, stitching on Christmas. It just, it started with the pumpkin wreath um, the Christmas wreath, and then I decided that I was going to pull out Santa's magic and work on him until I finish it, and then Mary 15 started, and that's Christmas too. I can't tell you why, but I guess I'm in the Christmas spirit, <laughs> right on the outskirts of Halloween. Doesn't make sense. 
So here is Santa's magic. And the sun is completely in the way. So I made it a goal to finish his beard. I have some ninja stitches that I need to do. So some beading here, some ninja stitches that I missed in a couple areas, like right there. There's a couple more over here. So those need to get done. Then the sleeve I worked on, and my goal is to finish the sleeve and I guess like get all these ninja stitches going. So when I say ninja stitches, it's when you stitch and then you have random stitches that you apparently forgot about. Um, I had someone ask me about beading as I go and if I recommend it, I would say no. <laughs> At the time, it was a genius idea, but now since I am so focused on making perfect stitches, it's near impossible to lay stitches correctly once it's already beaded. Um, I also can't put this in a hoop or a Q-snap. I can only do it on a huge scroll rod that is uncomfortable to hold. So I'm stitching in hand. And I mean, it's an older project. I started this back in 2019 and my stitches are not perfect. Um, I have a lot of crosses that are a little wonky and not uniform. They're not to standard. And that's definitely because I beat it and now I'm stitching in hand, but that's okay. These are learning curves and the learning curves are what make us better stitchers. I also have to frog all of this all of this brown out and change it for this black silver krynik. I messed up and I stitched the wrong krynik. I have another sleeve here. I think I have some more of his cloak here. The staff goes down to about here and then I can say that I am done. Last but not least, this is how far I've gotten, oh, my hair. This is how far I've gotten on Mary 15. So I have one, <laughs> not even finished of the 15. But so far, so good. Tons of color changes in this little tiny motif. So it does take a while. And I need to fix some of those stitches. And so yeah, that's all I have for that. This one's on uh, raw opalescent, 32 count, and the call before threads. What do you have? <laughs> you gonna say hi to Floss too? <laughs> so the hubby does do nice things, like bring me stuff. After a super long week of work, um, he knows that this weekend is going to be stitching and just relaxing and watching floss tube. I have one thing that I need to do tonight that I'll probably go super late. I don't want to be social, but I have to be social. And sometimes we have to be social. I am working on this whisper. And uh, this whisper has finished. <laughs> so I ordered more last night for the second sleeve that I need to finish. <sighs> and I'm watching Pop Kyle. And I have taken like five sips <laughs> from my coffee. Yep. Saturday with Santa and Kyle. So sleeve is done, minus like a couple, one color here and those beadings there. Um, need some beading there and some colors, some colors. It's just like, I'm, I'm so close. I really am. All of that is complete. I already said I have to frog this out and restitch it. I have that gold that I need to fill. 
And now I'm starting over here. So some things. <laughs> we have to pray that this side and this side match up. Another learning curve is, not, I guess, I don't know what I was doing with this one. So I want to say that Santa's Magic is my second like mirabilia that I started. Excuse the mess, but Mermaid of Atlantis over there. That was my first. And she is significantly smaller than this one. And much less stitching. So I think I went in a little hot-headed and very confident and I beat it as I went, and I think I already mentioned it wasn't the smartest thing to do because now I have this issue with I have having to stitch in hand and my stitches not being like machine perfect, which is now my goal in life is to be machine perfect. I mean, okay, obviously, yes, they're fine. They're, it's really not that big of a deal. No one is going to look at it that close, but it's just like little things that bother me. So today I am going to work and start this and just kind of trickle down. Another thing I didn't consider is uh, I don't have very much margin. Um, so I'm also hoping that the bottom of this pattern <laughs> is going to make it. That would be fun. Um, it should be fine. I should be fine. Ooh, those pairs need some white stitches. Ooh, see, I have, and I need to double check and make sure I didn't. Okay, I'm, I'm rambling. What happened? Don't hop around. That's not super smart because then you get to the point where you trailed over here and you trailed over here and now I have to make sure that these two ends are going to match up or I'm going to have to fudge it, which I'm very used to fudging. It's not a big deal, but just hoping that I don't have to do that too bad. Uh, I'm enjoying my day though. I'm relaxing a lot. So you know how Luda, well, if you don't watch Cross Stitch with Luda, you need to. But you know how she like shows and pans all of her beautiful flowers? I was laughing because I kind of did that with this, but um, you know, it's not beautiful. <laughs> and we're in survival mode. So I went on Reddit and I found out that maybe my orchid is dehydrated. So I pulled her out and I added some water into the roots and they like really humid environments. So they recommended that in severe dehydration cases, which could very well be the case here, to put them in a baggie to create humidity. So we're gonna, we're gonna save her. I also am going to probably purchase another orchid <laughs> as a backup <laughs> in case this orchid doesn't make it. But I am like, you know, the not so glamorous cross stitch with Luda. I'm the knockoff, <laughs> the fake Louis Vuitton of cross stitch with Luda. I'm being sad, let's pretend to be Luda. <laughs> so here are the, the score news. This is Mary 15. I already showed you my sad little start of the 15. I started like, I don't even think that the angel is pictured. It's not. So um, there's that one. And I mentioned in my last video that I had ordered floral 15. So I got floral 15 and it already came with the fabric. So I'm just going to stick with the fabric that it came with. And I have no earthly idea when I'll start this one. I also do not have these Just Nan pin um, set. I will do the same thing as I will do with this one, is just collect pins when I find them from just random places. Um, I showed this already, but I'm really liking Natal Work. They're an Etsy shop and they have very unique pins. I mean, obviously these aren't like glamorous gold plated, 
These are ceramic. Oh, come on. The little witch turned. This is a witch, but she turned around. There. So really detailed clay looking, very reasonably priced. So I already mentioned that this one's gonna go to a Halloween Biscornu. But I am going to just kind of be on the hunt for similar themed pins for these two Biscornus. And in my half sleep, I didn't mention what this was for. <laughs> so this is 32 count Zweiger Amsterdam Blue, which is out of production but I had found a shop that had carried a lot of Zweigart. Um, I believe it was on eBay. And I private messaged that owner and I said, would you by any chance have any Amsterdam blue? And she said she would check and she did. So she sold me the remainder of her Amsterdam blue. I think it's about half a yard. I don't know, she had like random bits and I just bought it all off of her because this is Lavender and Lace Emma's Garden. So Emma's Garden, it actually calls for Amsterdam Blue. And there's a bleaching instruction to get the background of this fabric. But I never purchased this chart because I was not going to purchase it if I wasn't able to get Amsterdam Blue. When I found Amsterdam Blue, I went and I purchased the chart. So we have Amsterdam Blue and Emma's Garden with plenty of room to mess up because I have plenty of fabric to finish her. Um, I think that everything else is still fine. Sometimes with these older patterns, um, the called for floss or the called for ribbons or whatever, uh, sometimes they're a little difficult to find, but it looks like everything is pretty normal. It's all DMC. Um, and down here, there's like some techniques that are a little intimidating, but will be just fine. And no, I have no earthly idea when I will start this. It's just kitted and added to my list of 279 projects that I would like to do one day. I also had a request for a close up of the scissors that I just like flashed by in my last video. So this needle carrier caddy, needlework caddy, is by Wool, Wood Wool Stories on Etsy. Um, they take a while to come in. They are beautiful, 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 handcrafted. Um, this is Edward Scissorbird and that's done by um that's sold by lindy stitches shop that skull scissor is from top knot stitcher then i have a couple scissor fobs this one was gifted to me by is it witches stitches i'm gonna put the name down below super amazing store i will link that down below and i love it it just that's actually one of my favorite things on my little tier of display of my needle stuff these are all saju scissors um i have the blue onyx one is really ridiculously hard to find but i found that one i'm on the hunt for the red onyx but it's been two and a half years since i've been looking for it and i haven't been able to find it this is the little beehive it has like a corner wooden thing from StitchCon, but the corner is being used right now in mary 15 so it's in there and this is a beautiful little knit bird um who was also sent to me by a dear friend hi i hope your phd is doing well and you're doing great um and so yeah she sent me that and i love it love it love it so up here this is a croc croc um from <laughs> breath of the wild i have some old wooden um spools yes old spools this is a saju um so they saju actually is french for monkey i believe and so they make these monkeys and i saw this monkey from i think it's also called needleworks it's a store 
one of my friends from there, she works there and she sent me a picture, I think of Saju scissors. And I saw this in the background and I had to have it. So I bought him for my 29th birthday. This is an artisan, like artisanal handmade wooden box that has more pin stuff. And I think I have, if I'm not mistaken, I am mistaken. Nope. There are almond M&M silks in there and just little. So this I bought in Mexico um, in one of their like, I don't know what to even call it. Just like a sh outdoor stand place. These lovebirds are from the Bahamas. Um, so yeah, also they do a lot of woodwork. That's an alt light that has saved me on several occasions. So yeah. Oh, and this is a cool one too. So when I went to, I think it was Switzerland. It was either Swiss, nope, it was definitely Italy. In Italy, there was someone with an old, old uh, sewing machine in the street who was just showing, was sewing. I mean, sewing on an old sewing machine. I don't know if I have a video, if I do, I'll insert it, but I don't think I do. He asked me what my name was, he wrote it down and <laughs> he sewed it onto a piece of paper. So, yep. And my StitchCon badge. I just, I don't know, this is kind of like my tower of happiness. Uh, eventually I'll have projects down there that make me happy. And then up there I just have more, like some candles. That's uh, Sean, Sean the Sheep. Uh, Spark Joy, this is like my Bible. Um, and then just like random things that make me happy. And make me happy. I guess you also make me happy. You make me happy. You're in my spot though. Yeah, are you watching Pam and stuff? Oh, they look, look, Pam looks very angry. Yes, you should not be in my stitching spot. See, Pam, Pam says no. And Steph is very worried, very concerned about you being in my stitchy spot. <laughs> this was not planned. <laughs> Hello ladies, I'm watching you right now. <laughs> so now that I'm more awake and, well, I guess my hair is semi-tamed. It semi looks okay. Um, I'm going to close out this video, uh, my vlog floss tube, because like I said, that's my life now is vlog floss tube. Uh, I hope you are all having a wonderful weekend and I'm going to start a new chapter of my vlog floss tube adventures. Um, I will see you all soon. Bye.